there'll be three guys in a group see those six women yep. one dude gonna talk to her the first girl she says f off i'm just trying to have fun and then immediately start talking to the second girl and the third girl as they mm -hmm. all looking at you like we just <laughs> saw you talk he just talked to our first friend like it's like but do i don't know was? your first friend that's not <laughs> mean i'm gonna pick your first right. friend like in the different scenario the second the second dude in the group you know he he kind of like you know what i i like just her so he might just go talk to her and if it don't work out he keep it he, he turned back to his friends like hey you know what i try third dude in the group he ain't even trying to talk to none of them he already got something <laughs> he like oh she's kind of cute you know maybe i would and then the other friends like then go talk to her and he gonna be like nah i, I ain't trying to do that welcome 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 you guys know what it is it's chocolate espresso podcast it's your boy king dez one of your seniors here and then i would like to also introduce my guy the one and only the senior host of host nowhere Oh man, I just got back into the studio. You know, I get comfortable. <laughs> hey yo, it's New Air. Uh, this uh, King Dez is leading this episode. It's all him. <laughs> he know what we talking about. Right, right, right. So y'all probably already seen part one, but we're talking about being a man in society today. And then the approach that I'm going to be asking you is, I believe that, and correct me if I'm wrong, if we deal with communication and rejection, <laughs> that we would solve half. <laughs> of our dating pool crappy dating pool problems listen, what you think listen listen uh i'm be real i'm, I'm be very I'm, I'm i'm blunt today i'm blunt <laughs> um i think it solves half i think it solves a, a lot if not half a good portion of what's happening because i do feel like as a dude i i haven't been rejected much ever in my life um i also don't like approach too much mm -hmm. um but I also think, again, you know, you also got the approach that matters. It also depends on the circumstances. It depends right. on the situation. Depends on the lady. The recipe. You know, like, <laughs> you know, there's that there's that trope where mm -hmm. you think she's giving you signals and she's just a nice girl. Right. <laughs> so, you <laughs> know, like, been nice to me. <laughs> it's not like the movies where you can kind of just be in a room with somebody and y'all talk and talk and you just, you know, like, you right. know, like it doesn't really happen. Not to say it couldn't. Right. You know, I'm just saying it doesn't if really you happen. You touch somebody's hand without their permission. You might be mm -hmm. in for an SH. <laughs> <laughs> you know so but if it did happen what's the rejection you know and and you also got to be raised a certain way because you can right. be uh, a good guy right and maybe you haven't been dealt a lot of rejection in your life when it comes to a woman so how do you take it you know mm -hmm. if you were raised right it doesn't matter how she says no no is no you can be like oh okay whatever bye you know right. <laughs> just yeah. moving, you know, keep it pushing on to, on to the next thing <laughs> You know, you could really like somebody not expecting a rejection because maybe she was really nice to you and you misunderstood. Right. You know, and it hits hard, you know, but it's about how can you still save face? How can you still have some sort of like dignity respect and, and dignity? There. You know, once no is said or the no is kind of given or you can kind of just you can right. be like, okay, OK, you know, you don't have to answer right now. Right. I can, you know, Where just think like about it and walk away. I'm not trying yeah. to do too much. Right. It's not. I mean, it's not too complicated. But again, that's how you were raised. It's, right. you know, you maybe you need more female friends that, you know, don't like you. And you're not really just good friends. And you can work, you know, you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. They'll sit you down. You can ask them, like, how would you reject a guy? And that, that, that. I mean, you got to have a conversation with them. A lot of guys would be more than happy to they would love if their female friends would say you know how how should i reject somebody and most guys will tell you flat out like well it depends on the circumstances but for the most part if you say you know i'm flattered but no, unfortunately you. no you know or just you know right now it doesn't work for me or you know i'm actually interested in somebody else or you know whatever the case is they'll tell you how most men would absolutely prefer to be you know turned down right i've seen some videos online where some women were like spot on with it they were mm -hmm. really smooth it was really kind like it was a clear no but but it was out of respect for the you know the guy that approached them and everything like there's there's a way to do it you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah, and, yeah yeah i've i've seen i've rarely i've seen one or two over the years <laughs> but i've seen a few where the lady came to him and he rejected her very politely like hey you know you know i'm married you know but i i'll let my wife know <laughs> that you think i'm a very handsome dude like you know i've seen right. a dude you know one guy i spoke to he was telling me 
uh, he's like, look at me, you know, I'm a good looking guy. And there are times where, you know, cause he was a, a doctor mm-hmm. and he's like, if you're good know, looking and you're a doctor, you, you already, <laughs> it's a doctor or a masseuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he even got hit on. And he was, he was telling me, he's like, you know, and I, I was at his house and he was telling me, cause I, we were having a conversation and I was like, yeah, you know, any, any of your patients ever, you know, try to try to do a little something, something. He was like, yeah, it happens. It doesn't happen like as often as the movies put it. You know, right, but like he's every like, week there's yeah, someone trying yeah. to. <laughs> and I was like, well, how do you tell him no? And he's like, you know what? Every time, without fail, even with the nurses, they know. I'm, I I highly respect your interest in me. You know, for patient confidentiality, I can't pursue this. I'll, I could lose my license. And if we were outside of work, I would say the same thing. You know, unfortunately, you know. I'm taken or I might just say, you know, now isn't a good time for me at all. I'm focusing on my career. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, and, right. if, and I'm like, well, you know, but again, it's kind of like <laughs> it's the it's the form, it's the way you reject somebody. Right, you right. Know? So to to go off that, to go off that so we can keep going um and push the narrative here. Um there has been countless, which I'm pretty sure you t- social media has had fun because <laughs> social media likes to perpetuate <laughs> negative energy, right? Uh-huh. There is the there is the the girls spitting on guys the guys some guys straight out clocking some girls like it gets horrible it gets a bad um it's the internet (laughs) right uh so let's say not you so we can put this in different point of view it's the opposite sex so let's say you have a daughter you get a daughter she she is the one that's like she's spitting on dudes oh, like no. she's gorgeous right she's gorgeous I failed dead as gorgeous. A father. you <laughs> you made like you made a beyonce level beauty and the world let her know it but it kind of went to her head right so she's like mm-hmm. talking down talking stuff about people and how would you address that as a as a parent as a parent um i would i would start this conversation off right here with as a parent okay i'm not a parent Right. right. <laughs> uh, so for, for for first, right. You know, start us off. This uh, is very grain of salt. It's a grain of salt. <laughs> uh, we can plan as much as we want. We can right. read as many books as you're we never, want. You're never going to be fully right. You just you'll never be ready. And I've heard that from too many people who are parents and do care about their children and are active in their lives. That being said, if I was a parent and had a child where everything went to their head, I think my first and foremost thing I would want to approach is I think I would start extremely young Mm -hmm. and I would teach them how to be humble about their circumstances in their life. Um, I was very humble growing up. We had a very decent situation, not to say we didn't struggle. Um, That being said, there was definitely a couple of times in my life where I went to friends houses and I was absolutely humbled because I play games with my family. We know we had game consoles and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I've gone to friends houses where I'm looking through their closets, which is like, again, like you going through somebody else's house. Like, that's not what you're supposed to do. And I was raised differently, but right. a lot of the friends I did hang around with the most, like my home was their home. Their home was, you know, like it, mm-hmm. the respect was there. So, of course, me going to the bathroom or open the refrigerator was like, I'm going to make my, myself some food. Like, that wasn't a problem. Um, but they didn't have no games. Right. And I would say, where are your games at? Game consoles. Oh, well, we don't do that. <laughs> we, we, we talking about? We, <laughs> like they can't afford it you know and i'm like oh okay you know yeah. well but you know it's the same thing when it comes to like children you got to teach them how to be able to navigate that like yeah. you got to know like you're in a bet you're in a better situation than other people right and you and might you're end fortunate up with, whether you were born that way blessed that way successfully given that way mm-hmm. a happy accident whatever you know and you know and as a child these things really do affect your like social hierarchy in your yeah. school i right? like right. kids know when you broke you know? <laughs> right. at least when we were in school they yeah, knew no, you were right, broke you, you know? were broke stink ashy like mm-hmm. this all affected like, your day-to-day yeah. where you were on the scale so you know let's just say for whatever reason maybe i dropped the ball maybe she's like 14 15 16 mm-hmm. i don't know let's say she in high school and right. the world's again now that little world is is her school right, right. everybody's going after her this and that I, you know what as a if you're an active parent i don't care what anybody says i've met plenty of active parents that are like you know i'm, I'm i always ask my children we have conversations i'm like and then i had one person i said well do you go to their school you talk to their teachers oh you know no i never really had a problem like that you know and i'm like well 
there's you could be an active parent in your child's life and you could be an active parent in all aspects of your child's life right and still give them autonomy you know right. like they can still live their life and not you know being like, informed is yeah not you making the decision do you go to the the the, the, uh, the pta meetings you right. know what i'm saying like do you go to the top you go to your school and you just check in on the teachers and you oh. know it's the only time you ever interact with your child's teachers is during the parent teacher conference right like, at that point i was always told that's too late too late because you're just hearing a report card that's already even been put into transcript mm -hmm. already right you can't even change that like nope. it's too late same thing like my younger brother uh i used to every year at least once or twice a year i would drop in on his class at random he would never know i was showing up and i'll go to one or two classes maybe three and i'll just i'll sit there with the teachers he'll go to the next class i'll ask them what the next class is and i'll sit there and say how is he you know how is he in class you know be honest is he talking to it too much is he doing other stuff you know you can tell because like, oh why is he here you know what I'm, saying? But like, I'm here because like, no no i feel you because I, I did that and i didn't do that much in high school i probably should have did it more there but i did definitely do that in elementary school for the same reasons you're looking mm -hmm. out for them you look out for them and you know again i was a good kid you know have i made my fair share of mistakes absolutely you know there's some mm -hmm. teachers i definitely was a clown in and I, it mm -hmm. wasn't right but you know again i just some of them teachers you, deserve it some of them teachers, <laughs> it. Some of them teachers don't care you know what i'm saying so it's like all right well you don't care yeah, you right. know you give me an inch it's really taking them out you feel right. me but but it's like again it's like you gotta how active are you as a parent you know i did that for my younger brother what makes you think i'm not gonna do that for, especially for my children right i'm gonna take a day off and i'm gonna shadow them you feel me right. like it ain't nothing that's no PTO sweat. in real quick i'm stopping mm -hmm. at the school today and i'm gonna ask the teachers like you know just from conversations you know is, is you know how is she with other with other children you know how is she with the girls how is she with the boys you know be honest with me because what i don't want is the is the stark reality like she's with when she's at home she like this when she's at school and i'm nowhere right. to be found how she is like she this. really and then same thing for my that. son you know because he can walk out the house with his pants pulled up with a belt on he get to school all of a sudden that belt went dis and dis disappeared. Up and disappeared like <laughs> no <sagging laughs> people can see his spider-man underwear like that's too much that's too much like it happening you, you don't do that at home so why are you doing it out here and about right okay you need to be friends with them and you need to dress like that then maybe you shouldn't be friends with them Right. You feel me? Unless it's the latter. Unless they all dressing with sweats, well, you know, uh, with suits on, with ties, right. and you ain't doing that. Oh, let me go get you some some sweats. Right. Let, let me buy my bad, my bad. I'm you. Like, you should have told me that, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I would have got you. But you, like you get what I'm saying, yeah, right? Like yeah, yeah. It, it, you, how active are you as a parent? If you really is a genuine parent, like why do you think the suburbs is so different? <laughs> <laughs> like come on like i've seen too many children like i've had i've had jobs at schools mm -hmm. and i've seen children out in the suburbs dress differently now right. could they have di like different kind of money yeah, yeah okay sure yeah but you ain't got to have money to dress a certain way right, and present yourself a no certain no way. the fashion is affordable when you really get down to it i'm mm -hmm. getting the whole out outfits off of shein for 17 dollars that have <laughs> higher <laughs> caliber clothing than what do y'all buy at lululemon but <laughs> i'm telling you no shots at lululemon just what mm -hmm. y'all buy at lululemon <laughs> um but then also i want to go off of that then how do you feel as a man where um that is abnormal right where f f sometimes the moms aren't even living up to that <laughs> the, 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 like why the is your mom <laughs> like you know they're not going to school there's teachers that are like i've never seen a parent in the last five years show up and ask me about their kid mm -hmm. you know and if I'm lucky, I'll have someone that cares enough to shoot me a text. Bruh. And then <laughs> as you being a male parent, right? A lot of them other kids and a lot of them other people, and unfortunately the adults would even see you as overbearing or over protective or over controlling. How would you respond to that? Let me let me tell you something right now. When they're not used to seeing, especially a, a healthy minded black man in that position. Well, let me tell you the something. the best father he can be. I'm going to walk in at any and every PTA meeting and says, I don't care what y'all have to say about me being active as a parent in my child's life you got I'm a problem parent. with it oh you you doing too much not, no no ask my kid if i ever had to put my hands on them the answer would be no right ask my kid if they think i'm i'm, I'm a helicopter parent the answer would be no ask my kid if they annoy that i'm always in their business maybe and they <laughs> might say yeah you know, like, oh, well, maybe. why you think because maybe. my responsibility in business <laughs> it's my responsibility i chose to have you i chose to be a part of your life there's and responsibility it, it, it's, it's my responsibility that. like right. i have to take a I, 
I, I'm, I'm gonna say you have to take a bullet for them. Right. You you lived your life. You helped create life. Now pass the buck. Right. You know what I'm saying. And if you don't think your child is up to caliber for that to even happen, then that's part for you to reflect on what you're, you're failing. To them. You're <laughs> failing. It's oh, but look, it's okay to say I failed. It's okay right. to say I'm, it's not working. You the, the thing that's not okay is to give up. The thing that's right. not okay is to, to just acknowledge it and say, oh, well, whatever. I did my best. Right. <laughs> no. Right. So I go to a PTA meeting. I go to whatever meeting i talk to other parents and they're like oh you do all of this like you do they have space and i'm like probably not <laughs> and do i care but what, no. do they, do, but what do they need space for right now like, like they got their own room there's a door on they it. got their own Come room on. they get they get buku gifts mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they are better off than some kids you they know asking me like and they were like oh you know your your 16 year old son wants to go and hang out with his 16 year old friend at their house and i'll be like yeah well i'm gonna go meet their parents right i don't care how old they are or how old right. his friend is i don't like i need to know their parents what do you do right. right if i find out the father ain't working and the mother is i'm gonna say why right because here's the thing their that, that child his friends child like that child that's in that home sees things knows mm -hmm. things if a if a six-year-old can figure out why their parents don't like each other you ain't no way no 16 year old <laughs> ain't gonna understand something you know right so and i need to know like what is how is he how is that other child you know experiencing this how right. how did this how, how did this morph in his head you know like you don't know if the, if he's if his out is still in his dad's you know pew pew mm -hmm. and, and pew pewing the, the cans in the backyard right and nobody knows this or cares to even understand what the noise like right. it, it, isn't it an extreme example sure but is it an example that could happen and does happen yes yep. and we don't know how they're experiencing life in that home and how they're you know right. their there's exit is there's um and to go off of that um I've been having this conversation about kids lately, lately as well. And there's been so many things coming out about people who've been um, assaulted going to a friend's house. Mm -hmm. And just because your friend ain't racist does not mean their uncle ain't, their auntie yeah. ain't, the wife ain't, the dad ain't, the, the cousin, the unconscious biases, family, the other friends down the street are all of it. Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, th and then stuff happens to your kid. And then it's like, oh, when well now that i'm older i can admit it or sometimes in a horror situation which is rare and far few well not as rare as you would think but where kids end up dead mm -hmm. murdered stolen kidnapped that stuff happens everything you like that's so it's like yeah no you gotta be mindful of what's going on out here you you you're a parent and your first and foremost responsibility as a parent is your children right so but again if i'm overbearing and it would be a very like it could be very subtle at times it could be blatantly obvious but mm -hmm. it would be everything i'm doing in a very like very responsible way yeah. you know so like do they do they have their own phone am i ever going through their phone reading out their tech no, no like no. you have your space you have your you know right. you're you're good and i'm for not me, i'm definitely the parent that will allow you to earn yeah you know you earn, earn extra your responsibilities and independence earn your responsibility and, you know you know by the time you're like all right i'm gonna go out with friends we have already had a history and a lifestyle where we know what that means on both ends and mm -hmm. we're all on the same page this is a responsible young lady or a young son or whatever. They have earned their way there. They've got their phone. They know when they have to be back. They like they, like if I have to tell you what to do in order to do it, you still need to be taught. That's mm -hmm. how I, that's how I was raised, right? When when I cannot have to tell you and you know, that's when all right. This is an this is part of you now. This is part right. of your responsibility. And it, I mean, it's like and I know we're we're stretching the conversation <laughs> every game, but you know it. It's crazy to think that like if you don't have parents, right? Like you can have a, a person that birthed you, you can have a person that helped create you, but you don't have a parent, right? Right, and you you really don't. And we need to separate these things because it all affects on it. it really reflects on how you can grow up and navigate life and communicate with people. Like somebody could be interested in you, and you've never known that you could politely turn them down you could you know somebody could be butt ugly just at like let's be real the oh everybody's beautiful and okay sure <laughs> sure you know but you're not like i'm not saying the world's best looking dude like i've definitely <laughs> know that said, but what is that butterface butter tone you know what i'm saying like <laughs> hey purple looks good on me in certain in certain lights i'll be honest with you right but if i wore black in in, in a different situation i'm not the good looking dude and they, whatever right but that's confidence in me and understanding that if i were to approach somebody and they decline me it is what it is like how many other women exist right like i'm not too concerned about that right and in 
I was raised a certain way where again, and I've had I have more sisters, right? Mm-hmm. Most of my family, it, most of my siblings are girls. So, right. you know, me learning how to be rejected or accepting the fact that, hey, you know, it's going to happen. It is what it is, whatever. Like, I'm not concerned with it. What it could have hurt. Sure. You know, all right. of like whatever t- amount of time I care to spend on you right. know, feeling like, that. Ah. You know, <laughs> like, but I'm not gonna sit there and try to fight somebody or call right. them out their name or like even if like let's say if, if I approach somebody and they decided to call me this, that, and the third and how you know they, they tried to like come out my tear whole down, life, tear right. me down. I'm gonna just walk away like <laughs> Okay. Clearly, clearly like, I dodged the bullet. Like, like clearly, you having a bad day, and I just dodged the bullet. Like, I'm more, I'm more happy about that. And you right. gonna be a story to tell my friends at a party. Like, right. yo, this crazy person just decided to dump on like, me. Like, part of my experience. Right? All like, I said was, hey, you kind of cute. I, said it, I, I didn't, didn't do no, I ain't do a rude. I ain't do no funny. nothing. You know. Uh, but also to go off what you said, like you had a, a a family full of women, and that like played into how you were able to deal with and perceive women. My story is actually obviously a lot similar. I've always been around women. It's always led to me having female friends, mm-hmm. asking them questions, digging deeper, and actually getting a, a, a blueprint to how they think and how they operate in the same thing. Like, you can reject me. I'm like, dang, I, you didn't have to tear down my whole character, mm-hmm. but well, keep it pushing. I'm about to hop on this call of duty. I'll see whoever's <laughs> coming up next, whatever party I'll go to next weekend, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good. But I feel like, you know do you think that that do you think that we may have an advantage over those guys yeah. who are I, not a raised round woman who just get the guy side of things i think there's three to four things that play a role into this um if you're if you're a guy who's been surrounded by women in general growing up uh, maybe it's just one sister who had a lot of female friends are always over so you just you were right. just surrounded by them uh, maybe you have just more se- uh, female uh, siblings right uh, maybe you just weren't able to connect with more men so you just had a lot of female friends growing right. up um, this is what I think I think either the first option which is most likely the case for a lot of us you tend to understand women in a certain way and I think that leads to the second one, which is a spi- which can can branch off. Either you understand them and respect them immediately, mm-hmm. and you know how to navigate that, or you don't care. You can right. understand them and you don't do anything with that information. Right, right. You're like that's not. Or, or maybe you just like your your uh, what do you call that condition not to care. So like it's not that you don't know that this is happening. Like oh I understand she's probably irritated because of this, but you don't care to do anything about it because right. you're just so used to anything else in the third affecting them and their you know and whatever's going on in their life and you just might be getting dumped on way. at the moment. You right. know? So it, you know that's one of I think that's two or three. But let's <laughs> say the fourth one is. Um, you could be surrounded by people and still not just understand them because maybe that's just that's never true. was your interest. Maybe you might have some mental thing going on. Right. Um, whoever, whatever the case is, maybe you just you could be surrounded by them and still not understand them. Right. Because right? people are just complicated. And right. I think and if you you're a woman, you're just yeah. 10 times worse, more complicated because <laughs> there's a lot of things going on and it's natural. There's nothing right. wrong with that. You just, you know, everybody's I complex. I, I, no, I second that because for women, like when I hear for the conversations with women it's just like you'll find one woman say one thing and another one will say the complete opposite like, like the fact yeah, that com- like word for word opposite the, the, <laughs> the fact that women can have six different kinds of like friends Mm-hmm. Like one that is out there having yeah. all kinds of fun and will be more than happy to drag you along with them. Right. There's another one in the group that's like very reserved and, and quiet. There's another one that is reserved but very loud and, mm-hmm. and behind the scenes. Like you don't know they just like the first friend, but it's you just low, low. Low, and low. And they won't even tell their friends. They might tell one of the other friends that they connected to. There's another one in the group that's just like mama bear, just always just looking out for everybody right. and making sure they're good. And there's another one that is like so reserved, so quiet and like you forget they even there and the only time like the moment they speak up everybody shuts up because they don't (laughs) because they don't speak (laughs) up you know what i'm saying like they can do like that and they all might agree or disagree on something it's like they can say the same sentence and it it means something different like but again that's just like how it is that's just people People you know be complex and here you are as a dude very simplistic and and by nature and you just trying to figure out which one you trying to talk to (laughs) for the day like it it, It wasn't even that serious that real you know and again you might have some guys like there'll be three guys in a group see those six women one dude gonna talk to her the first 
first girl she says f off i'm just trying to have fun and then immediately start talking to the second girl and the third girl as they yeah. all looking at you like we just <laughs> saw you talk you just talk to our first friend like it's like but do i don't know was? your first friend that's not mean i'm gonna pick your first right. friend like in this different scenario the second the second dude in the group you know he he kind of like you know what i i like just her so he might just go talk to her and if it don't work out he keep it pushing. he, he turned back to his friends like hey you know what i try third dude in the group he ain't even trying to talk to none of them he already got something he like oh she kind of cute you know maybe i would and then the other friends like then go talk to her and he gonna be like nah i, I ain't trying to do that you know like, <laughs> he, you know what i'm saying like he, 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 he all right you he, know that's the difference in all of it though you know and, yeah. and it's crazy to me and again but it's how can you all understand rejection how can like, you all understand like it's okay part where i would say like like going back to the main statement is like when you can effectively communicate and actually deliberate um and it's like all right no nah, i'm not interested cool and then mm -hmm. but for then there's also that con that conversation where we give each other passes and we give each other you know little add-ons where it's like if i say no well why why did you say no you know let people mm -hmm. know be no but also for the ladies part like you know let, let me know, know when, they, when, you, <laughs> when you like that guy and he says no don't ask him why respect it keep it pushing just keep it moving keep it pushing. it's awkward like i'm, I'm bet my last notes on this uh <laughs> i think it's awkward if i if i approached somebody and they told me like let's just say if i was at a club right mm -hmm. which whatever right but let's say i go to a club and i started talking to this girl and you know maybe out of kindness and she's bored too so she just talks because it's a very reasonable right it's just conversation chill, it's not nothing crazy. you know particular so she talking because it's out of respect and you know i say hey you know what you know can I get your number or you know Instagram whatever? Mm -hmm. She goes, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know what? You know what? I can All respect right. that, and I'm gonna just turn around and walk away. Right. But if I said, you know, can I at least ask why? Like, I, right. like, because even if you why, I, <laughs> why you ask it? Like, what difference? Right. Like, do you okay? Well, if you got the answer, I'm not why? attracted to you. You know, mm -hmm. laugh. You know, or let's say, like, okay, like, even if she gave you the answer, let's say the answer is because you approached me as a friend and not as a potential partner, I'd be like, so I needed to cat call just right. to get your like. Now you just start. Now you start stuff. Picking. You know, like, <laughs> come, like, there's no right. like. All right, fine. You know, move, keep it pushing. You right. know, there are some people that look like they want to just have a decent right. conversation before they can give out a number. There are right. some people who are like, no, and you they need do to have that call lack me, of you know? conversation, and then people who are posing people who are, are like saying they want a certain man but they're not being the woman that meets that type of man or the man that say they want a certain mm -hmm. woman but they're for sure not being the type of guy to attract that type of woman look on it, top of lies on top of problems on top of you know being mm -hmm. exhausted on top of entitlement and then at the end of the day people are just like you know rain pool has been pissed in. let's like, be real my my <laughs> final thoughts uh Ain't nobody getting married from a club. No, like it, nah. it, not anymore. Nah. Like maybe at our, our, I don't know how old your mom is, but yeah, at I mean, my parents' age, like you could have done it. Like right. it's definitely feasible. But they had soul playing at, yeah. at the time. Like you were actively dancing. Like you, that yeah. was a thing. Like but oh, you he knew how to dance. But you, you know, but the clubs were like meeting spots. They yeah. were like actually spots. That's what to they meet. had. They didn't have phones. No, they didn't have all these distractions, laptops, no. computer. Like these things weren't. You know, you you didn't have everybody in the third at your fingertips. Right. You had whoever you could meet at the club. You whoever know, at you a could meet at your job. Movies you like in the town. Like you literally like your options were limited. Right. And the club was a place where you could have gone to really meet your partner. And again, the music was different. Right. Not to it was say just an event. event. It was as, far yeah. as, as opposed to what it is now, where it's just like now it's a cesspool of just. Nah, you just you go into a club to try to meet somebody. It's not because you want to marry them. It's because you no. want to bet them. Right. That, in my that, opinion, no, that's no, really that's, what that, that is. That's the energy behind it. Yeah, because the entire do. energy at, uh, at the club is that. Hey, listen, if you find somebody at the club that you married, tell me about it. Right. <laughs> if, it if, if it went successfully, if you I would like to talk to you. I don't want. I don't care about your your bed night story. I don't want to know no, if you no. had married this person and got kids with this bird. I would right. love to know. You gotta. I'll even give you a I'll give you one extra. If you started dating this person and it's been more than five years, I would love <laughs> I would love to hear your story. Tell me, tell me your details. Yeah, I don't want to hear no we dated for a year or three. No, I want to I want a committed relationship five years or longer for right. marriage. That's right. what I want. That I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> so all right, all right. So I think we're gonna wrap this one up here. It's been great with you guys joining me, Nowhere, King Dez, your boy here at Chocolate Espresso Podcast. Hey, go check out the other videos. Deuces.